a very good morning to one and all and welcome to the webinar on A very good morning to one and all, and welcome to the uh, webinar on National Consumer Day. Today, it's 24 December. Every year, 24 December is observed as National Consumer Day, the specific theme in India. This day provides an opportunity for individuals to highlight the importance of the consumer education and consumer movement, as well as need to make every consumer more aware of their rights and responsibilities. The JSS Law College and Vidyavartaka Law College, Mysuru, along with Consumer Rights Education Awareness Trust Great Bengaluru has taken an initiative to spread awareness about the newly enacted the Consumer Protection Act 2019 by organizing this webinar on National Consumer Day. To begin this webinar, I would like to request Mrs. Deepu, Principal Vidyavartaka Law College, Mysuru, to give welcome speech. Please, ma'am. Very good morning to one and all. It's my really proud privilege to introduce the all distinguished speakers and the today's guest. So today we are organizing the National Consumer Day in association with the JSS Law College Mysore and Consumer Rights Education and Awareness Trust Bangalore. So in this regard, we requested YG Murli Dharan sir, sir has graciously accepted our invitation and to give a talk. So it's my proud privilege to introduce uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, Sri YG Murli Dharan sir. Sir had worked as an, a senior accountant uh, at uh, Bharat Heavy Electro Electrical Limited for uh, 22 years from 1982 to 2002. Served as a member of uh, Central Consumer Protection Council, Bangalore. Worked as a columnist on Consumer Protection, Bennett Coleman and Company Limited, that is Times Group. He also served as a columnist of consumer advocacy at Karnataka Electricity Regulatory Commission for a period of 10 years, presently working as a managing trustee of Consumer Rights Education and Awareness Trust, which was founded in the year 1993 and has been involved in organizing training programs for other consumer organizations from rural areas. He also written many books in Canada as well as in English on various issues on consumer rights and welfare. So with this brief introduction on behalf of the Vidyavardaga Law College staff and students and JSS Law College staff and student, I extend warm welcome you sir, welcome you sir. We also another legal luminary and dynamic person with us uh, that is Dr. K. Suresh sir. So, Suresh sir is an alumni of Vidyavardaga Law College and sir did LLM from University of Mysore. Sir, area of specialization is that international law and area of interest is that uh, constitution law, law of crimes, law of evidence, administrative law, law of contract, jurisprudence and many more subjects. Sir, sir has presented uh, more than 70 papers on child rights, uh, trafficking and human rights, uh, appreciation of evidence, uh, principles of natural justice, uh, right to information and human rights, etc. Sir has attended more than 100 national and international seminar and the conference. 
Sir is a regularly guest speaker at uh, Academic Staff College, Mysore Administrative Training Institute, Mysore Police Academy, Mysore, and also various law colleges and PG department in across in India. And sir also served as an uh, examiner for judicial service examination. And sir also served as a member of various bodies uh, like uh, Board of Studies, Academic Council, Senate member, University Grievances Committee, uh, Animal Ethical Committee, JCS Medical College, uh, etc. Et Suresh sir is really a very dynamic person uh, and he's having a more than three decades of teaching and research uh, experience. Uh, so he served as a uh, principal at JCS Law College for more than two decades. Uh, at presently, sir, is designated as a CEO at JCS Law College, Mysore. So with this brief introduction on behalf of the Vidyavardhaka Law College staff and students uh, and the JCS Law College staff and students, uh, I extend warm welcome you, sir. Welcome you, sir. Certainly it was not brief, Dipore. ಆಗ್ರಿ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ to be here uh, and uh, thanks to vasu i could invite myself to this program welcome thank you thank you, thank you. it's really a honor to welcome professor mk ramesh sir to welcome this program sir is also started his career vidyavardhaka law college later on he served in various law colleges so presently sir is working in uh, working at national law school of india university bangalore so it's really honor and privilege to uh, welcome uh, professor mk ramesh sir so on behalf of the vidyavardhaka law college staff and students and jcs law college staff and student i extend warm welcome to professor mk ramesh sir welcome you sir it's really honor to welcome my beloved guru professor uh, kb wasudeva sir sir is also having any more than 34 years of uh, teaching and administration experience uh, so the sir area of interest is that uh, international law and sir area of specialization is that international law sir area of interest is that international law law of torts and ipr and constitutional law and many more subjects and sir is also uh, presented uh, many papers in international and the national conferences so, so with this uh, brief introduction on behalf of the vidyavardhaka law college staff and students uh, and jcs law college staff and student i extend warm welcome to my beloved guru professor kb wasudeva sir welcome yeah. you sir <laughs> and i also it's my privilege to welcome dr natraj sir principal jcs law college mysore natraj sir is also alumni of vidyavardhaka law college and did his llm and phd from the university of mysore sir is also have a more than 20 years of teaching and the research experience sir has presented uh, um more than 60 papers uh, in various national and the international conferences so on behalf of the vidyavardhaka law college staff and students and jcs law college staff and student uh, i extend warm welcome to dr natras sir welcome you sir as principal deepu if i may introduce as principal deepu is introducing every one of the uh, participants here it looks like a conspiracy of the alumni of the law, of the yeah. vidyavardhaka law college i am i am being i think the senior most alumni of this law college <laughs> thank you sir so i also welcome last but not the least i also welcome all teaching and non teaching staff of vidyavardhaka law college and all teaching and non teaching staff jcs law college and all the students research scholars academicians and all the participants who are presented in this webinar so once again i heartily welcome you all for this wonderful program thank you anand Over to you, madam. Uh, on behalf of JSS Law College um, and Vidyavardhaka Law College, I also welcome uh, Mrs. Uh, Deepu, principal of Vidyavardhaka Law College. I welcome you, ma'am. Okay. Now, I I would like to request today's guest speaker, Sri Y G Murli Dharan, Executive Head of the Consumer Rights Education and Awareness Trust, Bangalore, and former member of Central Consumer Protection Council, to take over the session. Over to you, sir. ಹಾಂ 
ಅನ್ಮೂಟ್ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಅನ್ಮೂಟ್ ಅನ್ಮೂಟ್ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಲೀಗಲ್ ಲುಮಿನರೀಸ್ ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈಸೂರ್ ಐ ನೆವರ್ ನ್ಯೂ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಎಂ ಕೆ ರಮೇಶ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಅದರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹವ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ವಿಟೇಷನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೀಗಲ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂಸ್ ಎನಿವೇ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಐ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸುರೇಶ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಾಲ್ ಸಿ ಇ ಓ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಜೆ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಲಾ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ vasudeva was the first person to call me invite me for this day's program and of course uh, our friend great friend professor nagendra murthy and also mr nataraj and all the faculty of the jss law college and vidyavardhak uh, college for having organized this program and invited me and given opportunity to talk a few words about this uh, new features of this consumer protection act uh my greatest uh, uh, happiness is that uh, as far as my knowledge goes today only three colleges in karnataka or three organizations in karnataka are celebrating this world national consumer day one is uh, jss law college the second is vidyavardhaka and third is one college in shivamogga except this even the government has not been able to organize this because of various uh, uh, pandemic that we are facing anyway uh, that apart now i would just like to uh, put before you a few words on this uh, consumer protection act and uh, this year theme uh, i think are you able to see this one hello you are able to have the pro- i have shared the powerpoint presentation i think you are able to see that one yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. okay so fine so uh, before going to the exact uh, presentation a few uh, caveats one is i am not going to touch upon the all the provisions of the consumer protection act which was available in 1986 act because that is already well known and it has been repealed so there is not much to talk about those one i will just highlight some of the new themes as the uh, this year sir a uh, team of the national consumer day so this is what they call new features of the consumer protection act 2019 so this is the theme of this one and a small background why we are celebrating this national consumer day actually right up to 1989 or even 90 we were not celebrating this day but afterwards the government thought that we should give more impetus to consumer protection act and started organizing this consumer day national consumer day throughout the country the idea behind is the 1986 act was notified in the gazette of the government of india on 24th december 1983 86 so since then we are all organizing this uh, national consumer day so this is the background and various themes have been given in the past 256 years sir. and uh, it is according to sometimes we adopt the national consumer day theme which is exactly the same with the international consumer day that is we are celebrating on 15th march line uh, as a world consumer rights day so this are just the background theory to you so this time yeah. they have thought that even in fact last time also the same theme was there in a different name so now sir one nimsha oh. sir sir fi ant sir fi what put sir ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ನಿಮ್ದು ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಶನ್ ಕ್ಲೀನ್ ಆಗಿ ಕಾಣ್ತದೆ ಒತ್ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಒಳ್ಳೇದು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಸ್ now this is only we are looking now where what you are doing is only we are looking at the new additions made or new changes that has come into the old act itself so after going through this uh, new act i find some eight or 10 changes that has come out uh, with, with, when you compare the 1986 act one is new phrases have been added that is new definitions have been added to the consumer protection act meaning of some existing phrases have been widened 
you know the existing definitions was not uh, compatible or was was not uh, answering to the problem that arose in the implementation of the act so they thought they will widen the uh, definitions so some of the phrases have been widened the nomenclature and monetary jurisdiction of ctrf has been changed so this is of academic nature because the instead of district forum they have called it a district commission anyway that is what one of the and the nomenclature and also the monetary jurisdiction has been enlarged to such an extent which will come to it later on from the consumer point of view additional facilities for filing complaints have been introduced for instance online for some complaints and in fact that is not still uh, given effect to that uh, is left to the state government to give a date for online uh, complaints but right now there is a provision for online secondly there are some facilities has been given to the consumers to file complaints where they reside they need not go to the uh, district forum where the company was residing or the opposite party was residing all those things have been removed now so wherever the consumer is residing he can file a complaint in, in that particular forum or the commission very important is e commerce has been brought within the jurisdiction of cpa so e commerce you know it is not that it is a new thing there were some cases filed on the consumer forum earlier also but now a clarity has come that e commerce comes within the jurisdiction of the uh, cpa that is consumer protection act 2019 mediation process has been introduced though uh, yeah, you know you know personally i am not very much happy with this mediation still it has been introduced in fact when the draft of the consumer protection act 2019 was sent to all people to send their comments i had made a comment that mediation process should not be included as part of this one, but anyway they have added so they, let, let us see what is it one of the excellent uh, development is the introduction of the constitution of what is known as the establishment of the central consumer protection authority cpa ccpa at the center and also at the district level if uh, state level it is not clear i mean it is meant that it can also be established at the uh, zonal level concept of product liability has been introduced this one thing in a novel thing which we never had a separate law on product liability though we had some provisions in other act now it has been an included under the consumer protection act that that of product liability of course there are other two three features which are you know for example some new definitions are there which i am not going to take up in this presentation because there are around 47 definitions included in the consumer protection act okay so only a few has been taken for discussion new phrases added that is consumer rights do consumer protection act in 1986 spoke of consumer rights in such a long paragraph nowhere it was included in the definition of consumer rights we didn't know what is consumer rights it was explained in the in the body of the act so now a separate phrase has been added what are consumer rights and i don't want to go into the details that six consumer rights which has been adopted in the earlier act has been given the status of uh, definition itself they say what are consumer rights there is a, another concept what is called design you know this is with relation to product liability so design how, what is design how it should be i uh, these things are coming to very important because several cases were uh, were decided by the earlier forums and commissions uh, on this subject but there was a lot of confusion on that so now they have defined what is a design direct selling so direct selling or uh, you no know, it is a part of the e-commerce facility direct selling has come not only e-commerce for instance most of the ponzi scheme what we call how people were treated uh, is because of this direct selling so now they have brought in this one to curtail such uh, uh, the, this uh, you know unfair trade practices uh, being mooted under under the name of direct selling elect e-commerce of course e-commerce has been included e-commerce was here necessary because there were divergent opinion about holding e-commerce platforms uh, for the deficiency in services whether it is flipkart or amazon or e uh, swiggy or whatever it is 
uh, some forum said that uh, they come under consumer protection act some forum said no no they will not come under that in one of the case that amazon was of the view that they are only portals they are not directly selling anything they are not providing anything they are not manufacturers nothing so they, all this has been taken into account and now they have been brought under this purview of this consumer protection act of course is a landmark decision to include this one because in future i don't think uh, uh, i think our consumers will go more in more for uh, uh, e-commerce transactions electronic service provider once again this is a part of the e-commerce strategy endorsement uh, i happened to uh, be a part of the meeting several meetings at the central level and the state uh, about this tpa, TPA. i found that the, the last uh, ministry in the central government they were very much about uh, worried about this uh, uh, advertisements that is misleading advertisements so they wanted to ensure that misleading advertisements is given primary importance in the law so as part of this this interest, i think uh, celebrities uh, in the field of uh, film sports and all those things they are now coming under this endorsement category they are all endorsers now what are their liabilities it has come into the tpa purview as, as i said earlier mediation misleading advertisement and uh, the biggest definition in the consumer protection act is unfair trade practices and misleading advertisement it runs to two pages product liability product manufacturer product seller and product service provider these are all components of the product liability the last one is unfair contracts i think this is another good definition that has come into the law because uh, this is keeping in view the one sided contracts which was a menace for consumers particularly in the real estate business how unfair contracts are one sided contracts were taking them to ransom this has been now uh, slightly modified and then unfair practice has been to brought it of course this is only a sample illustrative new phrases added there are so many other things which i don't have time so i request people to look into the act also or i request dr suresh to have a two day conference or one day full conference in your college so that we can de deliberate this more in more uh, uh, detailed manner now we have few i have taken to see that what has been widened you know the meaning of the act has been widened the unfair trade practices has been added. here new practices has been included which is a part of utp one is publication of misleading advertisements so you can see even today there are so many advertisement which is misleading but uh, somewhere there is an asterisk mark or somewhere something like that is trademark is a small star or something like that and say that they are not responsible for all this even newspapers are now uh, saying that uh, they are not responsible for advertisement that is being printed in their magazines or newspapers so they make money out of it but they say they are not responsible for that one so now they have been brought under this one endorser that they are part of endorsement holding lottery prizes and schemes so this has been per se this is not uh, unfair trade practice but they have made it an unfair trade practice subject to certain conditions for instance they have to publish the results of the scheme in the same newspaper where the lottery scheme was introduced you know these are all some of the small conditions they have put or uh, otherwise it becomes unfair trade practice as well holding publishing results of lottery scheme they are not publishing that one not providing bills and invoices this is the best thing that can happen you know despite all efforts by the commercial tax officers department or other agencies people were not being provided with bills in fact consumers are also to be blamed because if they demand bills they increase the tax they have to pay the taxes so they are coming out now now they have to start arguing that you have to give the bills because there is no point in fighting only for rights this is the responsibility of the consumer Uh, to uh, demand bills now not providing bills or invoices is treated as unfair trade practices i don't know how this will affect private school management when they take donation without receipts or only through cash 
these are all the wider implications we need to look into our private hospital private trust sir all this will be in a big problem now not refunding the price of go or oh, sorry the of goods returned within a stipulated time so this is a sort of a new invention that is which are found in western countries are in the us and uk this law was there but in india we didn't have this one now there is a window period for every product that is sold it depends on the contract between the seller and the consumer 20 days 30 days 40 days whatever it is so if the consumer returns the goods within that particular time the amount should be refunded in completely fully nothing they cannot deduct anything like that uh, so the of course the number of days uh, the window period depends on the each contract or this one refusing to take back defective goods so this is another one you know there is a saying in almost all the bills that is uh at the end of the bill or at the back of the bill goods once sold cannot be taken back or exchanged the point is this was itself was illegal in fact uh, myself and uh, even nagendra murthy and so many other we took up this with the chambers of commerce and told them your members are typing or printing this statement on the bills and invoices how legal it is when sri shantakumar was the minister of food and civil supplies at the central level he made it clear that this is illegal and it should be deleted from the bills but still it is continuing now consumer protection act has given more teeth to consumers so if that the defective goods is to be taken back that is, otherwise it is an unfair trade practice this i just go through since you are all uh, legal luminaries and legal student uh, law student you can understand i don't need to explain this one six forms of practices have been called unfair trade practices under the uh, unfair contracts this is only for contract trade practices are different requiring consumer to give excessive security deposit for the performance of contractual obligations so security deposit simply you will deposit something so that's one way when imposing penalty on the consumer disproportionate to the loss occurred due to breach of a contract how much is can be uh, penalized a consumer can be penalized it should not be disproportionate to the loss incurred refusing to accept early repayment of debts for banks particularly foreclosure the amount they used to put i mean now it is not there because of rbi guidelines but in other areas it is still there if you want to close the accounts or Uh, the if you want to uh, pay back the amount they want some amount private banks are still doing that there entitling a party to the contract to terminate unilaterally this is found in uh, real estate businesses too. permitting to assign the contract to the detriment of a consumer without his content uh, consent imposing on the consumer any unreasonable charge obligation or condition which puts such consumer to disadvantage i think most of all the six types uh, can be found in a real estate agreement when you buy a flat or a land i think almost all these are available so this unilateral contracts which were very still going on has been brought under the unfair contract by the new act of course this is is now it is called all the forums are called district consumer redressal commissions district state and national commission now if you see i think some uh, our uh, you lecturers and professors should see the object and the of the consumer protection act as we mentioned in the objective statement earlier and now what is happening district consumer redressal commission can go up to 1 crore i think we can understand there is some reasonableness in this state consumer dispute redressal commission will take up only exceeding 1 crore and up to 10 crores do you mean to say a consumer will have a claim more than 1 crore at the present circumstances see the fate of the national consumer dispute redressal commission about 10 crores which foolish consumer can go more than 10 crores 
ultimately what is happening is the state consumer dispute redressal commission and national commission will be redundant in the next near future but you will have to pay for the salaries and other paraphernalia uh, for these the commissions except for appeals of course if the appeal goes they have to deal this one now what is the object of the consumer protection act to give protection to the small consumer who is cheated who is you know unfair treated whatever it is i remember uh, way back in 1985 or 83 or 84 the draft was done of the consumer protection act which we were discussing when i was one of the member of the uh, in another uh, group the bureaucrats had uh, inserted a clause that uh, the highest compensation to be given will be rupees 4 i don't know what is that for sanctity for that 4 rupees so rajiv gandhi threw back this on their face and said what is that foolish things you are doing you know that is the history of uh, drafting this legislation fortunately now this consumer dispute at the state level and the national level need to do some soul searching because is it uh, uh, felt that all these cases should go to the central consumer protection authority Anyway, that is left uh, open-ended question. But this is a very good uh, clause. Minimum amount of compensation payable shall not be less than twenty-five percent of the value of such defective goods or services. Fortunately, consumers will give at least twenty-five percent of what uh, is claimed as defective in the goods or services. This is one thing. Of course, we should be very happy that consent. See, the authority has been constituted. Now the authority is working in the India's the public administration, New Delhi, and most of uh, all the officers so far appointed are the bureaucrats or who were earlier in the Department of Consumer Affairs. Now they have gone to authority. Okay, that part. This is the concept of this authority is from the what is known as the 1968 or 69. the us that is united states of america they established what is known as consumer product safety commission uh, our great leader ralph nader who was the man behind this uh, establishing this uh, safety commission so since then there was uh, some pressure on the consumer groups uh, by the consumer groups to establish an authority Uh, now I should remember Mr. Uh, the late Mr. Desi Kan, who was a famous consumer activist in Chennai, that is uh, Madras. Uh, he fought for uh, establishment of this uh, authority, of course, uh, along with other groups. Now it is a reality. So, what are the objects of this authority? Protect, to promote, and enforce the rights of the consumer. Prevent unfair trade practices, and of course, other things. ensure that no false or misleading advertisement is made of any goods or services ensure that no person takes part in publication of any so once again all the whole objects of the consumer protection act is also the objects of the authority but there are some more powers earlier we had what is known as mrtp commission that is almost they have borrowed a little from there and then put into the see for example inquire or investigate into violation of consumer rights I assume auto or any company. There we had an investigation wing in MRTP Commission. Similarly, we are having a commission in uh, wing, uh, an investigation wing in the CPI uh, Protection Authority also. File complaints before the uh, CDRC, that is Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission. Now the authority itself can file a complaint before them, including the National Commission. Intervene in any proceedings before the CDRC. Then. Uh, recommend adoption of international conventions and best international practices of consumer rights to ensure effective enforcement of consumer rights we need to see what is the international level you know if you go through the uh, international that is un guidelines for consumer protection we have a lot of provision which is not been implemented in india not available in india so i think that is one of the link that i can give it to you what is un guidelines and other things UN guidelines on consumer protection also include sustainable goals, that is sustainable consumption. And today's news reports in uh, Bangalore 
says that is the report released by Karnataka government. We are far away from achieving the sustainable goals of the uh, 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 that is Millennium Development Goals. Undertake and promote research in the field of consumer rights. I think uh, Suresh and Vasudeva should start working on this because and also M K Ramesh should give a uh, think on this. And also, Mr. Natraj, because you are all the people luminaries there, colleges have to take up this opportunity. There is some funding mechanism also available. So, how, so see, uh, Suresh or Nagendra Murthy or Mr. Vasudeva, uh, recently I sent an email to Nagendra Murthy also. Several institutions are ready to fund uh, for this research. But I don't know why our students or colleges are not interested in this thing. ILDA has announced up to 5 lakh. It's a small, it may be a small amount. 5 lakh is not a small amount for a student to do some work. Why not they to take up all these things? So that's why I'm trying my level best to have consumer protection centers in each of the law colleges so that we can promote this one. We have already started a BMS law college. I think the JSS law college. Next I'll come to Vasudeva and see that one. Uh, a small group is established. Spread and uh, promote as awareness. It is a very general uh, clause. And there is a, uh, this is how objects of the uh, other maybe small small uh, enabling uh, objects are there. This is, these are the main objects. Encourage the non government NGOs to work on consumer agencies. Mandate the use of unique and universal goods identifiers in goods to prevent unfair trade practices and to protect consumer interests. So this is another one, like your logos and then uh, hallmarking and then uh, what are all this, you know, these are all parts of that. Issue safety notices to alert consumers against dangerous or hazardous or unsafe goods and services. I think most of the activities of the consumer groups are also being done by this one. Advise the ministries and departments of the central statement and consumer welfare measures. So consumer welfare measures, what departments are doing over the state. Issue necessary guidelines to prevent unfair trade practice and protect consumer interests. Most of them are very general in nature, but I mean, I listed it out. Now, the structure, uh, the number of officers there and all, I'm not going to into the detail, I don't have time for that one. But what are the powers or the orders that can be given by the uh, authority? One, recalling of goods or withdrawal of services which are dangerous as a currency. So recalling mechanism also is another new concept, except that in vehicles, we don't have a very nice recalling facility. No, they do, for example, some drugs are recalled after it is found that something has wrong in that. Vehicles are recalled. But uh, food, for example, I have not seen any case where food has been recalled. Except that Maggie noodle somewhere. Even they did not recall that one. They simply filed a complaint. But this is an area where con consumer groups and uh, students can see whether is there any instance of uh, recalling goods, toys, or children's toys. Now that has become a big issue that needs to be involved. Now recently Down to Earth magazine came out with a very brilliant uh, report of honey, adulterated honey being sold to you in various brands. Of course, the discussion is going on. Those things should be recalled if at all they are adulterated. Reimbursement of the prices of goods or services so called to purchase of such goods or services. So this is another one which they can give as a compensation to them. Discontinuation of practices which are unfair and prejudicial to consumer interest. They can order. This is what the orders are the powers of the commission. So before that, I have to tell you one now, as far as the other activities or the how complaints are taken by the authority, uh, consumer protection authority. No individual complaints are entertained. Only class complaints are entertained by the authority. Because, uh, of course, a, a, an individual consumer can also uh, file a complaint, but that should have a class in nature. That is, it should be affecting a large number of consumers or a section of the consumers. Second is, very important point is, 
so far right from 1986 or even for that matter right from 1947 when we got independence the district collector was nowhere in the picture in the consumer protection act he was never interested in the consumer protection now very very happy the act says it is the duty of the district collector or the district commissioner in karnataka it is called deputy commissioners or district collectors in other states they have to file complaints before the authority if there is any violation of consumer rights very very important thing i think now we have to hold the dc is responsible for not filing a complaint in the consumer forum if there is any liability on that okay anyway that's it. now this product liability It's a too big a subject here. They have com compressed it and put it here. There are a lot of loose ends in the act also. But I will give you the features and then we will discuss it later on. Product liability means responsibility of a product manufacturer, seller, or a service provider. The product or service provider to compensate for any harm caused to a consumer. This is very simple as far as Consumer Protection Act is concerned. So there are three actors in this: One, product manufacturer, product seller, and product service provider. This product seller is not a product manufacturer. So that is another subclass of it because one sometimes the product manufacturer himself may be a seller. But uh, there are so many uh, there are situations where the product seller is not a manufacturer. So there is another definition. But basically, these three are the people who will be held responsible for uh, product liability. The product manufacturer shall be liable in a product liability action if the product contains. I am not going who is a product manufacturer. There is a definition, but I did not elaborate. There is a manufacturing defect. There is a defective design. earlier i mentioned what is a design there is a definition of design according to then only you should look into it deviation from manufacturing specification so this there is a specification that it should be done in this fashion if it is a deviation now i i don't understand how a consumer will know what is the manufacturing specification to find out the deviation how will he know from a product does not conform to the express warranty that can be understood fails to contain instructions of correct usage to prevent any harm almost all uh, packed commodities nowadays contain the instruction how to use it and also in case of if you don't use it properly what is the measure that is to be taken that is printed there you know for example if you take a medicine bottle or a carton that will say how much you should take i mean as per doctor's prescription and then you should not take uh, you know improperly all those things are there but uh, now it is coming to products also long range product not only sorry, food is there any uh, instruction on food package how should you take how much you should take so that is left to the food uh, safety and standards authority to look into all these things but liability of product seller but not a manufacturer if he has exercised substantial control over the designing testing manufacturing packing or labeling of a product that caused harm so if the seller not a manufacturer changes or he has a substantial role in designing and testing and manufacturing he will be held responsible he has altered or modified the product and such alteration or modification was the substantial factor in causing the harm so we are, now we are talking about a complaint filed on product liability that has caused harm to a person or somebody so in such a case if the seller product seller has changed the alteration all these things and the harm has harm has been caused because of that change he will be held responsible He has made express warranty of a product independently. Normally, it is duty of the manufacturer to give the warranty, but sometimes what happens? Even the sellers, in their enthusiasm to sell off the product, they will increase the warranty by two months, three months, five months, or one year, or they may reduce it also. Such things will not be permissible permissible under this Act now. 
the product has been sold by him and the identity of the product of manufacturer of such products is not known or is known the service of notice or process or warrant failed it cannot be given that's what sorry failed to exercise care in assembling inspecting the such so these are all some of the grounds on which a product liability claim can be filed against the product seller who is not a product manufacturer very confusing i know but i can i am helpless people have to read it once again this another one the product liability action cannot be brought again as the product seller so this is an exemption to product liability claim at the time of harm the product was misused alter or modified so this is all uh, you know moment something happens in our house we try to meddle with it or we try to get it done repaired with some fellow who is in the neighborhood or in the whole footpath automatically we will lose our right to claim against the product manufacturer or seller who has to product liability cannot based on the failure to provide adequate warnings or instructions the product manufacturer shall not be liable here it is not liable if the product was purchased by an employer for use at the workplace so this once again is the prior a factory purchases something and workman is not following the instruction i think this will not apply product manufacturer has provided warnings or instruction to such employer so he has already given the instruction but the employer has not done it i mean the factory owners or the industry owners have not given that instruction passed down that instruction to the employees working in that firm using this product product was sold as a component or material to be used in another product there also you don't have any claim and necessary warnings instructions were given harm was caused to the complaint due to the end product with such of component i mean this is a, once again a very complicated one only when the other the component is a part of a bigger product the product was one which was legally meant to be used by or dispensed only by under the supervision of an expert who can use a medicine who can use a injection who can use a iv bottle all those things come under this experts the complainant who are using such products was under the influence of alcohol or any prescription drug which had not been prescribed by a medical practitioner so this is another one if a person is under the influence of alcohol and misuses a product and he is harmed he cannot claim a complaint i mean compensation there a danger which is obvious or commonly known to the user of a consumer of such product ought to have known taking into account the characteristics of the product very simple if you see the product you will know that it is dangerous if you use it improperly for example burning a cracker very much we know that you should not use it in a improper way or a negligent way we have seen many people you know uh, lighting the flower pot in their hands and then throwing it in the air so before it is thrown into the air it burns in their hands so these are all product liability claims for which there is no compensation government shall establish a consumer mediation cell to be attached to the each of the district commission state commission and the national commission or the regional branches so it, there will be a mediation cell attached in each of the three tier machinery for mediating the what i just see what is the the purpose of mediation cell is to assist consumer to address the grievances through mediation unfortunately this statement is my statement the purpose of mediation cell is to assist consumers in the right because that is nowhere found in the consumer protection act what is the purpose of mediation is not mentioned but still there is there cells will have a panel of mediation experts and conduct the mediation selected by a committee consisting of the president and members of the commission so lot of uh, you know this is an opportunity for legal new people to get appointment or some job or some honorarium you can file an application unless you have some very known there you will not be selected that is that is the case there is a panel of mediators will be 
appointed with uh, qualifications and all those things. One thing. Now, uh, retired people can st start filing their applications. It, if it appears that the CDRC, that is Consumer Dispute Retention Commissions, that there exist elements of a settlement which may be acceptable to the party, it may direct the parties to give consent to have the dispute settled by mediation. So this is the object of the mediation, and you have seen uh, so many mediation systems are available on this. Uh, they'll pass appropriate orders within seven days from the date of receipt of the report and dispose of the matter occurs. That is, the mediators will sit and they will discuss, they will come to a conclusion. If everything is settled, they have to give a report within, and then the CDR will pass an appropriate order within seven days. This is the procedure followed there okay, for mediation. Very small chapter under the Consumer Protection Act. We need to see how it will be effective because Consumer Protection Act itself is a mediation mechanism. It is not an act, it was not supposed to be a big act like this. It was supposed to be a mediation cell like through consultation, it should be solved. But anyway, they have done this. So, like here, the almost some aspects I have covered. One thing is which I have not covered here is the State Consumer Protection Council, District Consumer Protection Council, and the National Protection Consumer Protection Council. National Consumer Protection Council is slightly better. They are having, they are established, it's continuously going on. In fact, I was a member for three times. But State Consumer Protection Council has not, particularly in Karnataka, has not been constituted for the past 20 years. 20 years. There is no. The State Consumer Protection Council have been established for a few districts, not all the 30 districts. Or maybe now it is 31 district, but it is not working. It's another area where you can work. And I I find some of the some ladies in the conference hall. One issue that is it replaceable. We had a mandate Even as members of the Oh, oh. Oh. One, at least one person should be a woman in the Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission. Now they have removed that one. It need not be a woman. It can be. But there is no preference or reservation type of thing for women in the Central Government Consumer Protection Act. So these are all some of the major landmark themes for this consumer protection. And there are offenses and we are for uh, various uh, 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 this, you know, wrongs that is committed under the Consumer Protection Act. For instance, food adulteration. What is the punishment has been brought under Consumer Protection Act? It, it is very, very serious. It runs to 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs, 50 lakhs. Even imprisonment for uh, food adulterators, uh, misleading advertisement. Endorsers will be prohibited from uh, endorsing for one to two years or even three years if the product is found defective. All those things need a uh, big uh, detailed elaboration. I hope both the colleges will put your heads together and we will have a one day complete uh, deliberation on the Consumer Protection Act uh, and see students and the legal community and also consumers are benefited. And I am open to grilling now. Thank you for the time and thank you for patient hearing. Uh, Nagendra Murthy uh, ask sir to give comments actually Kariri Yuga. Suresh sir Kariri. <laughs> uh, sir let him uh, uh, give some remarks uh, later we can have some discussion okay. and uh, we are lucky to have uh, MK Ramesh here sir uh, your best friend and my beloved teacher uh, in Vidyavardhakala college actually and joined us. Uh, it is really a blessing for us. Also, ah, yes, sir. It's my sincere request that I would like to request uh, M K Ramesh to say a few words because now Matar Dali or Mat Kerala Bharati side. David or Narak Matar Dali. Okay. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, uh, listen to the stalwart. 
from the consumer movements a pioneer and uh, somebody who created create uh, murli dharan i recall my early days in the national law school when i used to visit his office he may not be able to remember but i used to visit his office and uh, interact with his colleagues so i think sometime around 92 93 around that time and i also recall uh, uh, my first published article uh, in fact uh, i have several phases of my teaching career and in one phase uh, i was doing a lot of work on consumer law at that time uh, before i moved to the environmental law field my first publication was on uh, the consumer interest in the legal profession Uh, so i i was targeting the legal profession as to how well they could respond to and uh, uh, be available to uh, address and redress the grievances of the consumers i also recall uh, uh, some of those wonderful time that i had with uh, the consumer activist groups uh, in the uh, in this particular field and i'm very happy that uh, Um, murli is the advisor to my colleague ashok in all the work on consumer law in the national law school and so uh, with his guidance i think the consumer uh, interest is taken good care of the movement from the caveat emptor to the caveat venditor how the movement has been successful is something uh, to a large extent dependent on uh, stalwarts like murli and uh, the motivation that they give and i'm also very very happy that uh, uh, we have all the alumni of the uh, vidyavardhaka coming together here mine was by accident and uh, thanks to vasu that i could see suresh and the other friends of mine here um, and thanks for recalling all that and thank you very much thank you thank you so much sir Mm-hmm. uh now i request participants uh, participants if they have any questions on the topic uh, they may uh, unmute themselves and ask uh, good morning all the all the teachers uh, i have a question to murli dhar sir this is with regard to artificial intelligence sir i wanted to know about the liability to be imposed on the uh, robotic surgeries on the cancer patients any patients for that matter so the, the which if at all amounts to deficiency in service on the part of the doctors of course medical negligence we have we have known more about it but about the robotic surgery sir how and whom uh, shall uh, the new act or the old act uh, uh, hold responsible and liable sir thank you okay uh let me just explain it shortly i mean with a short sentence so one thing i should thank uh, dr ramesh for having remembered our days in 1993 thank you uh, mr professor mk ramesh sir okay now you are able to hear me yes sir yes sir hello hello yes sir no yes sir yes sir we are able to hear you okay the student was asking or about uh, some surgery robotic surgery or the artificial intelligence whatever it is it is it amounts to medical services in uh, in general in general whether it is surgery or cancer or whatever it is now there is nothing much change as far as negligence is concerned in the consumer protection act new act the old act whatever is there is a deficiency in service now there is not much of change in the new act So, if there is a deficiency in service, negligence, medical negligence, it is as good is covered in the old act also, in the new act also. So, I don't think I don't see any new dimension added to medical negligence in the. Uh, but what they are doing over a period of time, uh, because there was a flood of uh, complaints in the consumer forum on medical negligence, most of it was not at all genuine complaints. Eh? They have now brought in certain types of uh, committees, expert committees, before taking up that complaint. That is, whenever a medical negligence came, comes, uh, case comes before the commission or the district forum, uh, they, there is a, a screening committee, something like that, or a sort of committee, experts committee, 
where they look into the case per se and see whether there is any uh, material uh, uh, available to prove that there is negligence it may not be a, a, a glitch at all also only then they will take up the complaint to the forum so this is to avoid this uh, unnecessary harassment to the uh, medical professionals and uh, delay and then uh, loss of uh, name or the fame or the defamation of the medical practitioner and all such things are there but definitely there is no change in the new act it stands as it is and uh, medical negligence is covered under the consumer protection act 2019 also the only thing is my uh, advice is it's very difficult to prove medical negligence uh, because uh, the, the the way in which the field is growing is also very important sir sir i have one question sir hello sir hello sir i have question sir i am audible sir hey hey sir please quote the few examples of the product liability sir ah product liability few examples sir product liability you are... hello sir i am you are not audible sir camera sir mat kal hello hello sir you are able to hear me now ha ah, yes sir yes sir yes okay sir. you want examples for product liability yes sir few examples so now recent examples i can give you when you are charging a mobile suddenly it blows up yes sir yes sir lpg cylinder suddenly it blasts maruti a uh, car yes sir actually maruti and so many cars have started by, you know with fire uh, exploding and on the road when you are in this park so these are all some of yes, the sir. instances of uh, product uh, get you know product liability for yes, example sir. there are many toys thank you sir okay thank you sir thank you very much okay okay thank you नमस्कार पार्टिसपेट तुम्बा any other questions okay yes we have come to the end of the program i am here to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion i would like to thank the guest speaker of the webinar shri vj murlidharan executive head uh, trade bangalore a former member central consumer protection council thank you so much sir for addressing and providing detailed information lucid and crystal clear pr presentation to our students and participants thank you so much sir okay yeah. butla wow i also would like to thank uh, professor k suresh chief executive jss law college mysuru and professor k b vasudeva director legal studies vidyavartika law college mysuru thank you so much sir i also thank dr m k ramesh nls iu bangalore for your uh, presence thank you so much sir i also thank dr s natraju principal jss law college mysuru mrs deepu principal vidyavartika law college mysuru and professor nagendra murthy for organizing this webinar thank you so much thank you so much ma'am and also thank our teaching and non teaching faculty of jss law college and vidyavartika law college mysuru and last but not the least all the participants uh, who have joined this webinar and made this webinar successful thank you so much thank you murli murli dharan ji <laughs> thank you sir thank you you can talk to uh, ramesh thank sir thank you one and all so mata gudran